In this video, we're going to take a look at KSP and molar solubility. So KSP is just an equilibrium constant for a specific reaction. The reaction is showing the dissolution or dissolving of an ionic solid. Um, and typically this is done for ionic compounds that are not very soluble in water. So what you would do is you put the ionic formula, um, the molecular formula on the left-hand side and indicate a solid. So you always start with a solid on the left-hand side and you're showing the dissolution. So you are breaking it up into its ions in aqueous form. So this would break up into one PB2 plus because it's a one-to-one -one ratio here. And there'll be two Cl minuses and make sure that two comes in front. It's not a subscript because it's not diatomic Cl. These are two negative ions repelled by each other. So notice solid on the left, aqueous ions on the right, don't forget the charges. And what's happening is even if you have this precipitate at the bottom, is it looks like a static condition because the amount's not changing, but some of it is actually um, it coming out of solution and recrystallizing or precipitating. So going to the left is a precipitation reaction, going to the right is a dissolution reaction. And you're showing the equilibrium between those things because in your container, it's actually at dynamic equilibrium where some of the solids dissolving and some of it is um, precipitating back out, but the amounts are not changing because at equilibrium, the amounts are constant. Um, and again, this is done typically for um, things that aren't very soluble in water. PBCl2 is one thing that is not uh, very soluble in water. And if you were to write the KSP expression, take a moment, give it a shot, um, you would get your products raised to the power that is a coefficient. So don't forget the charges. This would have a two as an exponent and the square brackets mean molarity. And it would be our products over the reactants. But wait a minute, our reactant is a solid all the time. Anytime you're writing a KSP, um, equation, you have to start with a solid on the left. So that means it's not going into my equilibrium constant expression. So there is no denominator. So you could put it over one, but that's really the same thing as having no denominator. So this that's why this is called solubility product. This is showing the solubility, um, the dissolving going to the right, the precipitation going to the left of an ionic compound. And um, there it's just the product, solubility product. Yes. No reactant in the KSP. Um, now, this indicates how soluble your solid is in water. So you can look up KSP values, and what you'll notice is they will typically be pretty small for these things, because as we said, these solids are not, that we're writing this for, that this equilibrium condition are not very soluble. So if you have a low KSP, if this is small, that means your ions, your concentrations at equilibrium that are in your solution are very small as well. You don't have much product. You're going to have a lot more precipitate. Um, at equilibrium, which makes sense for things that aren't soluble, and that's indicating a low solubility. If you were to look up the KSP for this compound, you would see that it's 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. So usually we're going to have K values, or KSP values for these things are typically going to be very small, um, 10 to the negative exponent values. And it would change with temperature, as we said, the equilibrium constant changes with temperature. Um, as, as you know, the solubility of things change with temperature. Um, and then sometimes rather than giving you KSP or talking about KSP as an indication of solubility, um, you might be given or talked about what's called the molar solubility, which is really just like in this situation, how much PBCl2 dissolves in the water. So we're basically talking about the molar concentration. What is the molarity of PBCl2 aqueous? Um, and you'll notice that PBCl2 aqueous in itself is not actually in the KSP, um, but you can infer it if you were able to find the concentration of PB2 plus, oh, that's the same, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, because this has a subscript of one here, or even looking at the stoic one-to-one, -one, and you could say, oh, that the molar solubility would be the same as the PB2 plus ion concentration. Um, and just to show you, if you were to look up solubility PBCl2, sometimes they are given in grams per milliliter, but if you specify molar solubility, here it is for PBCl2 in moles per liter. And it doesn't really make sense to look up what's the PB2 plus ion concentration. That's not usually what you want to know. You want to know how much of the solid is going to dissolve, and that's why it's the concentration of that whole ionic compound rather than one of the individual ions. And that's why it's not in the KSP expression. Even if I typed in how soluble is PBCl2, rather than giving me the solubility, they give me the KSP. So it's an indication of how soluble it is, um, as you see. So take a moment, practice writing the, the reaction that goes along with the KSP, and then take a moment and write the KSP expression for the reaction you wrote.
okay, and check your work. So you should be writing, breaking this up into its constituent ions and make sure it is a solid to start with. It has to be a solid on the left-hand side so that it's not included in the KSP expression. And this would break up into CA2 plus and QF minuses. And here's my KSP expression. Don't forget your charges. Now, it's important to note that in order to be at equilibrium, remember we said to have, we had to have both reactant and product present. Nothing could be zero at equilibrium. It's not completion. So in order for you to be at equilibrium with this dissolution precipitation reaction, going right dissolution, going left precipitation, um, you, you would need to have some solid at the bottom of your container. And this is why we said it doesn't really make sense to do this for something soluble because it would completely dissolve rather than having solid at the bottom. Um, so you need to make sure that you have both present. So what kind of solution do you have? That's a saturated solution. The maximum amount of ions have dissolved and the rest is solid at the bottom. And at first glance, it looks like nothing's happening, but you actually have movement where some of the solids dissolving and some of the ions are coming back out of solution. And that's why you're at an equilibrium. And that's why this has to be for things that are relatively insoluble or maybe even slightly soluble. And if you look up CAF2, notice it does have a very small KSP at 25 degrees Celsius. Take one more moment to practice this one more time. Write the reaction and write the KSP equilibrium constant expression. So again, make sure you have a solid on the left, double arrows, breaking up into its constituent ions that are both aqueous. And now we only have the product in our KSP because the solid is not included. And again, this is just the equilibrium constant for the equilibrium that exists between the solid precipitate at the bottom and the saturated solution in the container at the top. And if you're doing homework problems, these might be listed in your textbook. Um, and, and, again, and again, we're gonna normally see very small values for KSP, like for instance, for barium sulfate, because you have a small amount of solid that will actually dissolve. The molar solubility is very low. Now, the AP loves to ask conceptual questions about how volume might change the concentration of ions or the molar solubility, the concentration of the substance in your container. So here's my question. Would the concentration of the solution change? Once you've hit equilibrium, would it change if more water was added? or if you've increased the volume, but there is still undissolved solid at the bottom. So let's think this through. We think about what concentration, so you know, if I add more water, it's gonna look something like this, where if I add more water, I'm gonna have more volume. But since I had this source of moles that were solid at the bottom, more of that will dissolve. And then my molarity, is going to essentially stay the same. Um, if you wanna think of this kind of in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, if you increase the volume, that means all of a sudden you've diluted these amounts. And then the reaction's gonna shift right, and more of it's just gonna dissolve. And by the time I reach equilibrium, K is the same, so I need to know that my solubility is gonna be the same, if that makes sense in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. You can also think of it logically. And same thing going in reverse. Let's say I would evaporate some water. I'm losing some volume. But then obviously some of the moles are gonna come back out into that solid at the bottom and the concentration is not going to change. Less moles would dissolve and less volume, but overall the molarity is the same. So the concentration that you solve for at equilibrium or even the molar solubility is independent of volume. It is not gonna change whether you add or evaporate water, whether you make this container bigger or smaller, as long as, there is solid at the bottom. If there's no solid at the bottom, that would be a different scenario. Okay, so as long as there's solid at the bottom to act as either a source or a sink of the moles of this precipitate, you'll be able to have the same concentration for a saturated solution. So if you notice when I looked up the, um, the solubility of the PBCL2, um, that's a constant at a temperature. And again, talking about Le Chatelier's principle, if it's more helpful, same goes if you evaporate some water, right? You would bring down the concentrations of these. So the reaction would shift to the right, it would fill it back up, and the concentrations would end up being the same at the end because the KSP has to be the same.
Okay, so again, make sure you know KSP and molar solubility do not depend on the volume at all. And just a quick review, if there was no solid at the bottom, because you might be like, wait a minute, I know if you add water, that's a dilution. Um, that's true, you are diluting as long as there is no solid at the bottom that provides a source of more moles to dissolve and the more volume. So in this case, let's say there's no solid at the bottom, you add more water, your volume goes up, but your moles stay the same because there was no solid at the bottom to dissolve, now your molarity is diluted. So that is only true where you're diluting as long as you don't have solid at the bottom. However, if you have solid at the bottom and you are in a saturated solution still, it does not, molar, molar solubility and KSP do not change based on volume of water. Okay, take a moment and try this example and then check your work. And this is a KSP problem, but you can really treat it like any other equilibrium problem. So let's go over it together. So notice this is uh, either asking about KSP because this is the reaction that goes along with KSP. To the right is dissolving, to the left is precipitation. They give me the concentration of the silver ion, Ag plus, at equilibrium, and they want the KSP for the salt. Um, and remember that the KSP depends only on the products. It doesn't matter how much solid is in there to start with. They're telling me solid silver chromate is added to start with, but they don't give me the amount, and that's okay because it's not in my KSP, so don't get caught up with that. Now, there's two ways we can do this. Um, the first way is with an ice box. The second way is with stoic, and you can do whichever you want, and I'll show both. So if I'm doing this based on an ice box, I could say, okay, I don't care about the solid, so I'm going to cross that out. And it said I had solid to start with, so I know that I start with zero ion. So just be careful, even though they say this solid to start with, I don't care what you might get caught up. There's nothing in this. I don't know what to put in this box. Who cares? It's a solid. It's not in your equilibrium expression. Just cross it out. I tend to cross out any pure solids or liquids. Put in your chain plus 2x and x. And I know at equilibrium, they gave me the Ag plus. So I have a full column. Yay. I can solve for x. Set this up as an equation. 0 plus 2x equals 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4. I get that x is 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5th. So 0 plus x is also 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5th. And make sure you're working in molarities if we're dealing with KSP because those are concentrations. If they give you moles and liters, you have to convert first. As a note, you could have just bypassed the ice box using stoic, which is what I'm saying before, is if you know the Ag plus concentration, you see it's a two to one ratio of Ag plus to CrO42 minus. So I would just take half of that to get the concentration of CrO42 minus or chromate. And you see that, yes, that is exactly the same as my ice box. So totally up to you whether you want to go to stoic or through your ice box. And then we just plug into KSP. We have our concentrations of each. Um, K has no units, but just make sure that the units you are plugging in are molarity. They won't cancel. That's okay. And you get 1.1 times 10 to the negative 12. Yes, this is pretty insoluble. Now, part B, as for the mass of silver chromate solid, and you might be like, wait a minute, you just told us to cross out in the ice box. And that is true. I don't care about it in the ice box. But I just wanted to show you that you can always solve for the amount of solid that reacted or remains by stoichiometry. I have this concentration of Ag+. Plus. Um, they tell me the liters, so I can use those two things for showing with dimensional analysis how the liters cancel. I get moles of Ag+. Plus. And then if I know how many moles of Ag+, plus were produced, I can use stoic to figure out how much of the solid reacted with it. I took it out of molarity because we don't really want to use concentrations for solid. So um, if I do this, I would do um, a 1 to 2 stoic. And then I can mass it out because they're asking about masses. And you might be like, great, I have my answer. But wait a minute. If I took a product and used stoic to change it into the reactant, that is not how much remains. That's how much is used. So in order to find what remains, this is why they gave me the five grams initially, I need to subtract from the initial amount. And what you'll notice is for these reactions that have very small Ks. In this case, we saw we had a very small KSP. Um, I start with, I, I don't have a lot of reactant that got used up. I got a small amount used up. Most of it remains, and that makes sense for K being so small. So a couple important notes. When doing an ice box, if there's a pure solid or liquid, feel free to cross off that column. It doesn't affect K. Um, even if there's only solid to start with, that's great. Even though I cross off solid, I know there's zero and zero to start with for my um, products. 
And even though solids aren't in KSP, they do have to be there in the reaction. They will get used up or created depending on the K, and you can always solve for that, and that would stoic outside of the icebox. Okay, let's talk about molar solubility. So a lot of times, rather than giving you the concentration of a single ion, they will give you the molar solubility. Um, and that's not of an individual ion, that's the concentration of that whole thing at equilibrium as we talked about. So for instance, they say the molar solubility of PbCl2 is 0.014, calculate KSP. So always write your reaction that goes with it so you know exactly what your KSP expression should look like. And when you're doing this, if they tell you the molar solubility is 0.014, then I can automatically, either based on the subscripts or based on the stoic of this reaction, figure out what the concentrations of each ion is. For every one PbCl2, there's one Pb2+, so the concentration would be the same. For every one PbCl2, there's double the Cl-, minus, so I would just double that value and it would be 0.028. And then I would plug these amounts into the KSP. So even though the molar solubility itself isn't in the KSP, I can, do, I can immediately get the concentrations of each ion, plug in, solve for KSP, and I get that same value that I showed you before for this particular reaction. Um, the other thing to note is that rather than looking at the formula, if you wanted to, you could look at this reaction in the sense that, hey, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, it's a one-to-two ratio, if you're more comfortable doing that rather than looking at subscripts. I tend to look at subscripts to get these ratios, but either way would work out. Um, now, some people um, like to give the molar solubility a term, a variable, I should say, either x or s. Um, I tend to do x because I always like to solve for x. So given this same example, um, Here's my reaction, here's my KSP. I'm just gonna make my molar solubility X. I'll plug in later. So therefore, Pb2 plus would be the same. For every one PbCl2, I get one Pb2 plus, so that's an X. For every one PbCl2, I get double the Cl minus, either by looking at the subscripts or the one to two ratio here, that would be two X. And now I can plug in my KSP in terms of X. This would be X. This would be two X inside and squared. Notice that kind of stoic happens in two places. Um, and then this is the same as KSP equals 4x cubed. And now I can plug in my solubility for x and I get the same answer. I'm showing this a certain way because when we go in the other direction, if you have to solve for molar solubility from KSP, this is helpful. Why else this is helpful is because there's gonna you're gonna notice that there are set templates for KSP depending on the formula of the ionic compound. So for instance, if you have an ionic compound that is a one-to-one -one ratio of ions, um, you're gonna get KSP equals X squared. For instance, let's write the reaction. AB would break up into A plus and B minus. My KSP expression um, would just be, if I give the molar solubility of ABX, it would just be X times X raised to the first power each. Ah, obviously X squared. That kind of makes sense. Let's look at if it was the formula AB2 or A2B. Meaning, if I have AB2, I would get one A plus and two B minuses. And if I was gonna write the KSP, KSP would equal, given the molar solubility, X. So if I make AB2 X, I would get X for A, I would get two X for B because there's double B, but don't forget I also have to square the B and I get that same expression that you just saw. Saw KSP equals four X cubed that you saw for the last problem. KSP equals four X cubed because it fits that format AB2. Some people like this, some people don't. And just showing you quickly the other ones. Okay, AB3 goes to A plus and three minuses. So this is a three X cubed and it turns into, that's not nine, that's three squared. Three cubed is 27. Um, and A2B2 would be two A pluses and three B minus, so it'd be two X squared. Notice the stoichiometry is in two places. It's in with the X and it's in the exponent. So don't forget both. Three X cubed and that's 108 X fifth. Um, and again, you can feel free to like it to do this. There is going to be a point where if they, if it's not solubility in water, that this won't work, and I'll show you that in a moment. And 
Um, I tend to always just write the reaction and then do it in terms of X, not using this point, but kind of deriving it along the way. And you have to see kind of what works for you. Okay, let's do another example now where we're working backwards. I'm asking you to calculate the molar solubility, sometimes just ask solubility, of MGF2 if the KSP is 7.4 times 10 to the negative 11th. If you want, take a moment and try this. Um, other, otherwise, stay tuned and we'll do it together. There's two different ways you can do this, and I'm going to show you both ways. The first way is always write your reaction, always write your KSP, so solid on the left, breaking up into its ions in aqueous phase. And you might be like, um, hmm, how do I do this? If you want, you can make an ice box, and you can assume that you have all solid to start with because I don't care how much solid I have. And we can reach equilibrium whether we start with all reactants or all products or a mixture of both. So I'm going to cross this out. And even though I don't care about how much solid there is, let's assume we start with all solid and make this 0, 0. Then I know this is plus x. This is plus 2x. And they don't give me anything at equilibrium. So let's just make this in terms of x. This is x. This is 2x. And now we can just plug in our KSP expression in terms of x. So mg2 plus is x. F minus is 2x, don't forget to square that because of our expression. And notice again, the coefficient and the exponent are in two places. And then I could just solve for x, right? Divide by four on both sides, take the cubed root, or if you don't know how to do that in the calculator, do it to the one third power, and I get 2.6 times 10 to the negative four. And just make sure you answer the question. X should be the molar solubility. That's what we want. We want the MGF2 concentration at equilibrium. And that is your X. It's the same as that of MG2 plus in this experiment. Okay. Now, showing you with the shortcut. As I said, just make the molar solubility X, right? So same reaction, same KSP. I'm just going to make the molar solubility of MGF2X. Remember, that's not exactly in the KSP. So based on the molar solubility, I can find the concentration of the ions. For every one of these, there's one Mg2 plus, so this is also X. For every MgF2, there's two F minuses, so this is two X. And now I can plug into my KSP expression. Here's my KSP. Here are my X, two X squared. And oh, look at that, it fits that template. I just talked about if it has that AB2 formula, you're gonna get KSP equals four X cubed, which it could have gone straight to as well if you like that shortcut. And then if you solve for X, divide by four, take the cubed root or the one third power and you get 2.6 times 10 to the negative fourth, which is what we got before. Okay, um, now here's the thing where I said, be careful with those templates because this last problem was finding the solubility in water. And if they don't even mention water, I would assume water. But look at this problem. This is called the common ion problem. And rather than the solubility in water, I'm asking about how much would dissolve in 0.2 molar magnesium nitrate. You might wanna try it first, feel free, but otherwise just watch. So in this case, let's talk about the ice box way. Okay, so here's my reaction, always right at the top. Here's my KSP. We'll do an ice box. Can I assume that I have zero ions to start with and all solid? Wait a minute, no, because I don't start with all water, right? I actually start with a source of Mg2+, right? This source of Mg2+, is why is it attached to nitrate? If you remember from our aqueous and solutions chapter, nitrate was always soluble. That's why it's attached to nitrate. So this is a 100% ionized solution, which is the source of Mg2+. So my concentration of Mg2 plus is 0.2. My concentration of NO3 minus would be 0.4, but that's not needed anywhere. That's not in this reaction. So if you have, this is called a common ion. You're in a solution of Mg2+, plus, which is a common, an ion in common with this reaction. So rather than starting with zeros, I don't start with any F-, minus, but I do start with some Mg2+. Plus. So I would have to put 0 0.2 here and a zero here. Now I can do the rest plus X plus 2X, and I don't have anything at equilibrium that I know, so I got to put everything in terms of X. And then when you go to your KSP, if you start to plug in, you're going to be like, oh, this is annoying. This is a quadratic formula. Hang on, there's a shortcut. So there's this thing called the 5% rule. And if something ionizes less than 5%, which is really going to be the case for most of these KSP problems, you could assume that KSP is so small 
that very little ions are going to be there um, as a, from this reaction at equilibrium. Meaning that if KSP is super small, very little MgF2 has dissolved. And we could assume that X is way, way, way smaller than 0.2. So much smaller that when I add it to 0.2, it's really not going to make a big difference in this number. So rather than writing 0.2 plus x, we can just write 0.2. Make sense? So that now becomes not a quadratic equation, which is amazing. We can just easily solve this with a little algebra in our calculator. We take this number, we divide by 0.2, um, also divide by 4, and then take the square root we'll get 9.6 times 10 to the negative 6. And what you'll notice, and that is the MGF2 concentration, what you'll notice is last time, the last problem, it was the exact same problem except not in 0.2 molar magnesium nitrate, it was in water. You are going to get a smaller answer for your solubility in the common ion than you would in water. When we laughed at this, we got 2.6 times 10 to the negative 4. We're getting 9.6 times 10 to the negative 6. The solubility has been severely diminished in a common ion. And it makes sense if you think of Le Chatelier's principle. If I have a higher concentration of Mg2 plus to start with, I'm really not going to go forward as much, right? Um, so it makes sense that our equilibrium is not, we're not going to have as much Mg2 plus and F minus at equilibrium coming from the reaction. Obviously, we're going to have 0.2 molar Mg2 plus still in our solution. So this is where I just say with those templates of, that I showed you before with the x squareds and like, you know, the 4x cubed, all those things. Um, just be careful. You can use that all the time with water. But if you have a problem with a common ion, you want to make sure that you account for that um, initial concentration being the concentration at equilibrium. So if you're doing this without an ice box, again, I rather than plugging into the templates, I tend to just make everything, you know, make the solubility X and then derive it from there. So MGF2 would be X, MG2 plus would be X, and F would be 2X if this was in water. However, it's not in water. It's in 0.2 molar MG2 plus. So rather than MG2 plus being X, it's really x plus 0.2, but we're going to assume that k is so small that that's the same as 0.2. Because even if I go back to this problem, if I actually find, I found x is 9.6 times 10 to the negative 6. If I go back and check this assumption, hey, 0.2 plus 0 0.0000096 is really essentially still 0.2. So it makes sense that I can do that. And now I'm going to plug into my KSP everything in terms of X, except the MG2 plus is 0.2. And this is going to give you a different format than if you use that template, which you're used to seeing like 4X cubed. You don't see that anymore. So if you are using those templates, please be careful of common ion problems. If you see a common ion problem, you could still make the molar solubility X, but whatever ions in common is going to have the same as the initial concentration, not an X anymore. Okay. Um, and what you'll notice is a few things. If you're asked for solubility of an ionic compound, it might be helpful to write an ice box if you liked that way. For substances with a small KSP, you can assume that are in a common ion, you can assume that whatever that initial concentration of the ion is, it's going to stay that way. X is going to be so small in comparison. Be careful of the shortcut equations. You have to replace the X with the initial concentration for the common ion problems. And you may not have this bullet. You might want to write it down. It's really important to know because sometimes you could just ask a conceptual multiple choice about it. Solubility will typically be less when dissolved in a solution of a common ion than that in pure water. This is called the common ion effect. Adding a common ion decreases the solubility. Whew, I know that was a lot, but thank you for staying tuned through it all.